the discovery of a new type of stellar explosion, an electron capture supernova, in fact, illuminates a medieval mystery, tantalizing at the least. Now, a worldwide team led by UC Santa Barbara scientists at Las Cucumbres Observatory has discovered the first convincing evidence for a new type of stellar explosion, an electron capture supernova. And that's boom time. While they have been theorized for 40 years, real world examples have been elusive. They are thought to arise from the explosion of a massive super asymptomatic giant branch star, which is referred to as a SAG B, for which there has also been scant evidence. The discovery published in Nature Astronomy sheds light on the thousand year mystery of the supernova from AD 1054 that was visible all over the world in the daytime before eventually becoming the Crab Nebula. Welcome to the show, folks. It should be mind-blowing. Now, historically, supernova have fallen into two main types, thermonuclear and iron core collapse. A thermonuclear supernova is the explosion of a white dwarf star after it gains matter in a binary system. These white dwarfs are the dense cores of ash that remain after a low mass star, one up to eight times the mass of the sun, reaches the end of its life. Now an iron core collapse supernova occurs when a massive star, one more than 10 times the mass of the sun, runs out of nuclear f fuel, according to the fairy tale artists and its iron core collapses, creating a black hole or neutron star. Between these two main types of supernova are electron capture supernova, micronova, and Fisficliano nova, which is yet to be discovered. These stars stop fusion when their cores are made of oxygen, neon, and magnesium. They aren't massive enough to create iron. Now let's take a look at this. Supernova 2018 ZD, according to this paper, is marked with a white circle on the outskirts of the galaxy NGC 2146, pictured here. And you can see this is the supernova in question. Quite spectacular. It's the first example of a new type, <laughs> a new third type of supernova predicted 40 years ago. Composite image with data from Hubble Space Telescope proves it here from Las Cucumbres Observatory and other sources that, well, can't you tell that's a supernova, for goodness sakes? While gravity is always trying to crush a star, what keeps most stars from collapsing is either ongoing fusion or in cores where fusion has stopped. Now, if, this hy <laughs> if the hypothesis of what a star is made of is wrong, then everything I'm saying is completely gobbledygook. But I will continue. The fact that you can pack the atoms any tighter in a star. In an electron capture supernova, some of the electrons in the oxygen neon magnesium core get smashed into their atomic nuclei in a process called electron capture. This removal of electrons causes the core of the star to buckle under its own weight and collapse, resulting in an electron capture supernova. Holy Makarova. If the star had been slightly heavier, the core elements could have fused cre to create he heavier elements, prolonging its life. So it's a kind of reverse Goldilocks situation, according to the authors. The star isn't light enough to escape its core collapsing, nor is it heavy enough to prolong its life and die later via different means. That's the theory that was formulated beginning in the 1980s by Kenichi Nomoto of the University of Tokyo and others. Over decades, theorists have formulated predictions of what to look for in an electron capture supernova and their SAG B star progenitors. Wow, what a story. The stars should have a lot of mass. 
lose much of it before exploding, and this mass near the dying of the star should be of an unusual chemical composition. Then, the electron capture supernova should be weak, have little radioactive fallout, and have a neutron-rich element in its core. Now, what you're looking here is an artist's impression of the super asymptomatic giant branch star and its core made up of oxygen, neon, and magnesium. This is the end state of the stars around 8 to 10 solar masses, according to the authors, whose core is pressure supported by electrons. When the core becomes dense enough, neon and magnesium start to eat up the electrons, reducing the core pressure and inducing a core collapse supernova explosion. Wow, say that five times fast. Now, the new study is led by Daiichi Hiramatsu, a graduate student at the UC Santa Barbara and Las Cumbres Observatory. Hiramatsu is a core member of the Global Supernova Project, a worldwide team of scientists using dozens of telescopes around and above the globe. The team found that supernova SN2018ZD had many unusual characteristics, some of which were seen for the first time ever in a supernova. It helped that the supernova was relatively nearby, only 31 million light years away, in the galaxy NGC 2146. This allowed the team to examine archival images taken by the Hubble Space Telescope prior to the explosion and to detect the likely progenitor star before it exploded. The observations were consistent with another recently identified SAG B star in the Milky Way, but inconsistent with models of red supergiants, the progenitors of normal iron core collapse nova. The authors looked through all published data on supernova and found that while some had few of the indicators predicted for electron capture supernova, only SN2018ZD had all six. An apparent SAG B progenitor, strong pre supernova mass loss, and unusual stellar chemical composition, as well as a weak explosion, little ra radioactivity, and neutron rich iron core. Wow, all that in that tiny spot. Holy macaroni. Well, the author started asking, what is this weirdo? Hiramatsu said, then we examine every aspect of SN 2018 ZD and realize that all of them can be explained in the electron capture scenario. Wow, my mind is blown simply on the wording. The new discovery also illuminates some mysteries of the most famous supernova of the past. In AD 1054, a supernova happened in the Milky Way galaxy that, according to Chinese and Japanese records, was so bright that it could be seen in daytime for 23 days and at night for nearly two years. The resulting remnant, the Crab Nebula, may be a petroglyph that I finally figured out what it is. Do you see these circles here? This weird circular pattern of disjointed circles has been on petroglyphs about a thousand year old everywhere I look. And I had no idea what it was until today. And we're going to be doing a follow-up video on what I just discovered doing this video. And it is mind blowing. But the new the supernova that happened is the Crab Nebula here. It has been studied in great detail. The Crab Nebula was previously the best candidate for an electron capture supernova, but its status was uncertain partly because the explosion happened, well, nearly a thousand years ago. The new results increase the confidence that the historic SN1054 was an electron capture supernova, and you're looking at it here, the Crab Nebula. It also explains why that supernova was relatively bright compared to the models. Its luminosity was probably artificially enhanced by the supernova ejecta colliding with material cast off by the progenitor star, as was seen in supernova 2018 ZD. Now, all this 
these, this verbiage I've been saying is all, in my opinion, gobbledygook, because there's still a star at the center of the Crab Nebula, probably still a star at the center of uh, ZD2018, so on and so forth. But I will finish you up with Hama Hiramatsu said, and he added, it was such an eureka moment for all of us that we can contribute the closing of the 40-year-old theoretical loop. And for me personally, because my career in astronomy depends on it, when I looked at the stunning pictures of the universe in the high school library, one of which was the iconic Crab Nebula taken by Hubble, the term Rosetta Stone is used too often as an analogy when we find new astrophysical objects. But in this case, I think it's fitting. The supernova is literally helping us decode thousand-year-old record from cultures all over the world, and it's helping us associate one thing we don't fully understand, the Crab Nebula, with another thing that we have incredible modern records of, this supernova. In the process, it's teaching us about fundamental physics, how some neutron stars get made, how extreme stars live and die, and about how the elements were made and get created and scattered around the universe. Well, th that statement is total garbage. What is true is that they may have explained what type of nova occurred in 1054 AD that was witnessed by all the Aboriginal people on Earth recorded in petroglyphs worldwide. And we'll do a follow-up video on that. What they failed to prove is that this is any special type of supernova because it's all conjecture. Supernova 1, Supernova 2, and now Supernova Type 3. Well, they're all just making it up. Yes, that's what science is all about. Very thin theories based on le very little fact. Now, they're claiming that all these supernovas eliminate stars. When you look at most of the supernovas, there's still a star left behind after the explosion. They can't explain that. So they're completely off track, Jack. This thermonuclear idea of the sun burning its energy out and then exploding is completely cockamamie in my idea. What is not cockamamie is a plasmoid that is powered from a main common source that surges every so often. We all know the power surges happen in cables. They happen in your house. How many times in your lifetime? It is that surge, and there are no breakers. Think of a sun as a cosmic circuit breaker in the sky. Holy macaroni. And that's a boom to knowledge. Proper prior planning prevents piss poor performance in a dystopian world where science fiction is now science fact. And that's a fact, Jack. Boom. Supernova style. Click on one of the other boxes to gain more knowledge. Leave a comment below. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't. And follow us along on our journey to finding the truth. Na -na 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 -na.